Can you imagine being an insect toy type being that got hated on by the same people on the planet you was raised on just because you're smarter than the other insect type people on the same planet? That's basically what a nihilist had to go through because he was born in this place known as the negative zone, which is a pocket dimension composed of antimatter. He was literally an anomaly amongst his own kin. He wasn't alone, a whole bunch of creatures of nightmare, but only one of them would qualify as to be sentient. Of course, it was him, but he had sense. Unlike the other, on Earth, beings would like this would be called mammals, ones that would have sense but no he's not he's an insect but he could actually think he even asked why is he different from the other what makes me so different it was his very ability to ask that question which alienated him from the other creatures in that place he didn't realize this until much later he was brutally attacked by the different beings or creatures on this planet so here he was actually the victim because they hated him he had to dip and hide from these type of folk Annihilus came across this ship that had a whole bunch of dead bodies on it, had a helmet, it lets him see what had happened before, different distance and galaxies far away. The ship used to be previously owned by, it shows who they was owned by, how they starved to death, how they crash landed on this planet and such. Annihilus listened to all these recordings so he can gain knowledge on what's going on. He was the lone insect for 10 centuries. He has grown in intelligence and in strength. During his journey and adventures throughout those years, he came, he has taken power from the life canisters and have created my cosmic control rod. His obsession over this treasure, the cosmic control rod, is which made him need to get rid of everybody so they can't threaten his immortality. The cosmic control rod, whoever's in possession of the cosmic control rod will be reborn. Why, one of the reasons why he's obsessed with it. Earthlings have never seen this kind of armor. Armor forged from a matter antimatter alloy. This weapon gave him his greatest treasure, prolonging his life, the cosmic control rod. He wants to destroy all life in universe because that's the only way he can ensure that his long life can be certain because nobody can take his con cosmic control rod from him. Talk about paranoid, but he's got a point, I guess. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna oppose him if everybody's dead. He's just straight sadistic and obsessed over this power though. Morn can make an argument that he has some good battle suit or gear thanks to his intellect, like his exoskeleton armor grants him ridiculous levels of strength on the power house tier and not to mention he also has his own horde annihilation wave so he has his own army to fight for him when he needs to on top of his already ridiculous strength himself with this cosmic control rod he's a ridiculous threat they even say he's a universal threat level it pretty much explains his background here and annihilation wave massive fleet led by him a literal flying fortress on top of giving him a long life it also harnesses vast amounts of cosmic energy which can alter the atomic structure of matter into configurations and manipulate powerful energies basically it gives him blast power one could say he has this exoskeleton that renders him superhumanly strong and durable now, yeah that's the reason why he's super strong and durable his armor gives him a literal eternal protection a field of force gives eternal protection to annihilus annihilus all his powers in general his exoskeleton giving him strength durability cosmic control rod giving him blast power He's able to take out the entire Fantastic Four, Halo Medusa from the Inhumans. Do you see how everybody's laid out? He fought a pair of Asgardian warriors, Odin's personal guard, laid out, laid out, laid out, laid out, laid out, laid out, like, yeah. Even beings like Scarlet Witch try to blast him. He can resist those type of blasts from her, another powerhouse tier. He's strong enough or durable enough to catch an Asgardian sword with his hands. Nova Heat, he can withstand from Human Torch. Beings like the Thing hurt his hand punching him it, ah my hand notice how quicksilver bounces off of him blast star blasting him he laughs it off blast star can destroy planets by the way just in case you was curious the fact that all this stuff put together he's able to fight not only jane foster thor it's even stated that he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with thor and they're talking about his power in general strong enough to cut through nova and spider-man like a blood saw like got nova and nova's pretty strong himself grabble jane foster thor but not just her other avengers He's fighting too on some team busting type stuff, blasting Nova tears. See them all trying to jump them, strong enough to punch them all back, including Jane Foster Thor, flying through them. But I gotta admit, they did get the advantage over him at the end. It wasn't easy by any means. So he still wasn't completely defeated. They just had to get him out of there for temporarily, or one could say battlefield removal. They even said without this, we probably would have perished, letting you know how much of a threat he was. Portal seal. He's able to withstand blasts from beings that wield the quantum bands, even countering attacking beings that use quantum bands blasting them back there was these electron cuffs that reed richards made he even stated i don't even think the thing can shatter them being the super cuff he still breaks them anyway this kind of already confirms he's in the thing level at bare minimum just from the fact that even ben couldn't shatter him and he still was able to do it not to mention he literally straight up punched the thing and knocked him the freak out his punching power can do this to the male captain marvel and damage him pretty badly even carol eric masterson thor he can just slap him his attacks can harm thor they say he nearly collapsed from his attack from a nihilist even slug fested with rick jones hulk 
See how their arms and punches are colliding here? Strength. That's right. Powerhouses like Quasar makes force fields. He can punch through it. Characters like the thing gets punched back. He punches so hard. Like in this particular occasion, you can see the thing's skin chipping with his punching power. His punching power is so insane. Even Invisible Woman stated she cannot keep this up forever holding his punches back. Punching power was able to do that to her shield. Proof of his strength even more, a Thor tier character like Jane Foster Thor. You see her arms and you see them like literally arm locking in a contest of strength and she can't just overpower him. Thor tiers in general can lift entire planets or planet sized snakes and stuff like that. You can literally see his arms locking with a literal Thor tier. Not only that, punching through Invisible Woman's force field. As Invisible Woman was able to shield from punches temporarily from this guy, obviously he broke through, but she temporarily blocked a few punches from him and Annalis was able to break this same woman's force field that was holding off a berserk sentry that was kind of going crazy here. More proof of Annalis' power. This would kind of make him millions of times past star level because characters like the sentry or powerhouses in general in Marvel, not just sentry, they're just way past star level by a lot for the most part when it comes to destructive capacity. Sentry having the power of one million exploding suns is not an exaggeration. It's literally been stated in multiple comics and multiple different occasions. It's literally a part of his lore. That kind of lets you know the baseline standard of how powerful Marvel characters are just as a bare bones minimum this obviously should apply to Annihilus. he's already proven with his exoskeleton suit and all this power from the cosmic control rod he can access these levels of power or else he wouldn't be able to break the shield that the same shield that sentry had to hit a couple times to break through and he broke it too thor tears can lift planets heavens jane foster thor matching her in strength with her arms and muscles locking with one another proof of it that way in strength if they wasn't in the same strength league with the powerhouses it wouldn't make sense on why he's such a threat to our powerhouse favorite or they would just do Annihilus like this and overpower him like that you can literally see the facial expressions of her struggling showing that she just can't outright overpower his grip like that with showing his physical <laughs> on top of him already being a hulk level or a thoris level being he actually stole the hulk strength this one time to even power himself up even more he was so strong the hulked up Annihilus, or one could say say it with me temporary power up of course he didn't keep the hulk strength but just in this particular occasion slug it out with gladiator a thor-ish tier type being that depends on his confidence on depends on how strong he could get makes sense for this to be a mismatch he could probably give him a war in the one-on-one -on -one without hulk strength powered up thanks to hulk's power that he took a straight on blast from thanos him in his powered up state he was able to fight evenly with a base thanos a being someone could consider in those skyfather or mephisto ranges outside of their realm of course the fight isn't even easy but it lets you know how strong thanos is the fact that he ain't just completely blitz him thanos is actually still able to fight back even with hulk strength it lets you know how strong analysis has gotten because without this Hulk amp, I don't think he'd be able to take on Thanos. But yeah, it a decently long panel. Thanos is just annoying. Let me just battlefield remove him. But he fought on part of him physically for a minute. Somebody trapped him in a teleportation limbo. Like, what? On top of the cosmic control rod that Annihilus has, he's had other weapons over the years, like the quantum bands, the things that Quasar uses to make him a Hulk or Thorish tier, weapons that powers him up. He's had nega bands, overpowered artifacts. Even though he's already a powerhouse with his own equipment and the cosmic control rod, you get the idea. This kind of made him more powerful than ever before, and just the power is pleasing. Your bands will give even more. And of course, that's when he slugs it with Nova and all that good stuff because he's a space type character by taking the power of the quantum bands he was able to take an assault from a group of beings known as the united front which is basically an army backed up by nova himself it's coalition army it appears he's wearing the quantum bands here on top of that he still has the cosmic control rod talking about power stacking nova is somebody i would say that's in the thor ranges when it comes to the powerhouses in marvel annihilus clashes with him in a slugfest type of occasion even blasts him back seems to even be overwhelming him to the point where his face looks discomforted and he's like ah blasting him with the, the quantum bands as well they even state the quantum bands they're making him too powerful even to the point where nova was at death's door annihilus survived a blast that was strong enough to wipe out not one not two solar systems but three star system wiped out a lot of his fleet decimated but these bands allowed him to survive all of that force regardless you see what i'm saying but obviously he didn't keep them this was a save with me everyone temporary power up something marvel likes to do and he don't have him no more but he don't need it his main weapon is cosmic control rod but temporary power up stuff aside because he doesn't need temporary power up to be a sufficient threat anyway right on top of his exoskeleton he has blast power like how he vaporizes a group of creatures here i just showed you two seconds ago had a beam struggle with thanos blast star had minions they are gone blasting blast star yeah again literally stopped mr fantastic on his on the die made cuffs out of solidified energy group of slaves he just vaporizes 
throw a tears he can hurt real bad like eric masterson for example he made it as guardian take a dirt nap by touching his sword with his blast power all oh, this is thanks to the vast cosmic energy manipulating ability of the cosmic control rod he wields like here it's implied that telekinesis like how he picks up reed richards and slings him made him lose his footing like, with a hand gesture with the telekinesis one could say he can kind of fly but he can just make a rock he's standing on float so it's technically just him levitating and of course you can't have telekinesis without having the ability to project yourself in large distances or have some telepathy type stuff when you have telekinesis them two seem to be related when it comes to powers and fiction i guess not to mention he was able to break free of thanos's telepathy actually breaking free of his imprisonment the cosmic control rod can blast with energy and can also absorb life forces of his asgardian brother sucking them dry the immortal energy is adding all to my own power so he can kind of increase his power on the fly via energy absorption one of the smartest ideas i would ever think of draining odin while he's in the odin sleep was probably one of the best ideas especially when he's defenseless draining his godly power he even drained Quasar's energy. Give me your freaking quantum bands. Did he just absorb time warping power? Because it's cosmic control rod. He does absorb some of the time bending power into his cosmic control rod. Showing that he can absorb a lot of different types of energy. So if you're energy projector, just be careful when fighting this guy. Supposedly he can summon creatures at will to his beck and call thanks to his the cosmic control rod. It has a lot of abilities that aren't necessarily listed in his descriptions or something but it makes sense though since he has his own fleet and he knows how to alter the molecular composition aka one could say matter manipulation with the cosmic control ride there's this time where reality was getting altered to the point where they were two-dimensional they asked him can knowledge can't you use your power to channel to shield us from this vortex's emanations he was able to do it but he didn't know how long he was able to shield them from these machinations you know bro his power by himself is already crazy but the power of his fleet should not be underestimated you probably thinking oh they're just fodder creatures that are nothing well he's the boss boss but then you have like queens or generals of the annihilation wave they got the names of them here they have served as analysis loyal queens since his rise to power each queen is assigned with their own flagship then he has other subordinates like admiral salo this particular guy under annihilus commands the harvester of sorrows an organic hive-like spaceship which serves as one of the most feared weapons in the annihilation waves arsenal a near indestructible living organism created by the negative zone geneticist this isn't even the main guy in the annihilation wave army admiral salo has a massive harvester ship it is as large as a small planet toy and engulfs other planets in an energy bubble which slowly breaks the planet down into its most basic organic elements this harvester of sorrow ship break it down into energy or food you guessed it, it's literally an energy beam that can break down an entire planet into its most basic organic elements an entire world turned to food for the annihilation wave the annihilation wave has other members or had members over the years not necessarily just creatures from annihilus but one could say the different beings that he recruits they're like temporary partners for the annihilation wave or fleet he has members like raviness he aligned with the annihilation wave serving as a pack alpha seeker and analysis second in command then he has bioweapons like the cures they even stated your leader raviness you know they're they're fighting the silver surfer and stuff letting you know of their threat level folks that's under annihilus himself you can kind of get an idea of how strong analysis is, is based on the people that's under him in leadership the annihilation wave even captured galactus one time and used them as a power sword it temporarily captured obviously this isn't a part of his standard fleet obviously even former heralds of galactus they've even captured terex acquired nation wave has even captured characters like moon dragon powerful psionic type telepath type being the annihilation wave has large ships these ships have blast power that can destroy things multiple times the size of earth you guys know how big a sky is right so tell me why they can have so many ships deploy at once it's swarmed with so many different type of creatures you can barely see the sky that's how many different creatures he can just call it his back and call it disposal being a threat because of sheer numbers is an understatement the kiln one of the most overpowered prisons in marvel history an inescapable intergalactic prison they're slicing through the kiln who needs speed when you can just teleport to anywhere you need to go or they can just stalk you anywhere in the universe when they want to These monitors can even monitor other universes as well I hate when comics do this they have the best feet we don't see how they did it on panel like how did he do this captured adam warlock when he's not accustomed to his new omnipotence thanks to the resources this bug was indeed very busy he managed to slay the mighty galactus a feat he thought near impossible no telling what power level he was at and was he fully fed and un hungry you know we'll never know they don't ever tell that type of detail in comics he's slain the shiar the most scientifically advanced race in this sector they've been humble even the celestial what what he has sky forces land forces like all imagine all this coming at you man 
you got to worry about all of this coming at you, these type of forces and all this to come at you. Strength in numbers, they can overwhelm Nova Corps type people. You're probably thinking, oh, man, if they're just weak, man, it don't matter how many it is in numbers. Well, they ain't that weak. They can still kind of overwhelm powerhouses like Captain Marvel, Carol, for example, to where in numbers they can actually overwhelm them to some degree where they're not just fodder. Even obviously they're not powerhouse tier by themselves. It's them in numbers, they can team up on the powerhouse tiers and stuff. They have decent firepower, though. The wave can quickly overwhelm Kree defenses. They eat everything after capturing the planet, even the ships, even the corpses. Yuck. All feasible matter into energized crystalline matter so they can feed properly. Let's please not get on the nega bands that, of course, he temporarily had. He didn't do nothing flashy with these nega bands. He just used one of them so he can power a cannon, merge a couple realities together or something. That's what he wanted to use this cannon for. He also had one on his arm, too. When it comes to raw speed, he has flight speed. Of course, he has fighting speed or he would just get blitzed and he never gets blitzed. Let's face it. Me on there right behind him. Seems to be flying ahead of it, showing his raw speed. Notice how all these Avengers try to blitz him like I showed earlier. He reacts to this blitz and punches them back straight blitzes iron man and falcon with a tackle nova loves the blitz and nova does have fighting speed by the way and he just reacts to him and gets him off of him this proves that he's at least massively faster than the speed of light when it comes to the reflexes because of the simple fact nova is ridiculously fast he literally is ridiculously fast the helmet he literally wears enhances his fighting speed simultaneously slows down so he can react dodge asteroids and sun and speeds up the seconds between so they don't drag out like years giving his brain Reaction time and processing speed to be able to process things while moving at these speeds. Nova has this type of capability, yet this doesn't matter to Annihilus even when he tries to blitz him. Despite his combat speed, Annihilus still can react to this stuff. In this occasion, he flies around Reed Richards so fast, he appears to look like a blur speed. Reed is thinking the same thing, so it's not just my opinion about how he's looking like a blur to the sight. Notice how he sidesteps his attack here. Even when he's younger, when it comes to fighting speed, he deflects beams of literal light. Notice how powerhouse tears like Nova when it comes to speed. They try to blitz him like this, just smacks him like that. But for the most part, that's just about going to do it. It's obvious that he's in that Thor levels of power with the powerhouse, the standard powerhouse levels of power for the most part, unless he gets a temporary power point or outside sources he can surpass himself. Man, his freaking annihilation horse somehow captured Galactus. And then they somehow took out some celestials. Part of that could be his intellect using energy or extraterrestrial sources to get advantage over beings that are way above him. That standard Marvel stuff, right? I mean, think about all the different artifacts Marvel has. All a person has to do is like find the cosmic cube or something. You're instantly celestial tier and you can imprison celestials i mean cosmic you know just different type of weapons artifacts these characters can use i'd say annihilus has earned his reputation though but what do you guys think did you guys know he was this strong did you think he was weak let me know but i gotta give a shout out to everybody that has don donated to the channel helps out a lot believe it or not <laughs>